Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining today. This is your host Nino, once again inviting you to an episode with this Asus EEPC 7014G, which in a previous episode lost its keyboard due to it being destroyed by a hairdryer. Whoever wants the details of that adventure, I really have to point to that episode. But in this, today's edition, we shall be discussing the aftermath. Now, the evident first thought one is having when such a thing happens is to absolutely slaughter it. I did entertain that thought for a second, but then thought it over. Getting the original keyboard was unfortunately out of question, as it costs more than the machine itself. And so I decided, instead of finickying around with these very small keys it used to have anyway, to get it simply a full-size keyboard. This one. And fortunately, in the 2020s, such things are available cheaply. And I did. <laughs> However, the only little thing that remained was that I would still have to use its keypad. Like, the keyboard is just perfect, you know, whatever I do, it's completely silent. And that is already a usable setup. But then I discovered there is a possibility to use a keyboard's keypad as a virtual mouse. And really it goes like this. You are just like pressing one for diagonal down, three for diagonal down to the right, six is right, eight is up, and so on. Like the number keys, you can imagine them as arrows into the respective directions. Five is left click and zero is right click. Okay, it doesn't do here anything, but I can move it somewhere where it does. For instance, up here, and then I'm pressing zero, and it doesn't do anything. But now, yeah, now it does. Okay, and here I could just move it up, press five to remove this again. Great, I think even the plus is doing something. I think this is like either double clicking or clicking left and right buttons simultaneously. So one can totally do that. And just to show you how this is working in case you have such a use case, let me zoom into the command. So that it is, set XKB map option keypad colon pointer keys. You can create a little file in your home directory alternatively and you can Google that online if you Google for pointer keys. But I find that actually easy to remember and it is a comfortable way if you want to use your keyboard as a pointer device and not even bother with touchpads, mice and whatever other vermin there are in the computer world. So this brings us a notch back into the times when one could use only a keyboard to, co to operate a computer. And that, of course, is something very enjoyable. So that really is the ending of today's very brief episode. I just wanted to show you that, that the EEPC has not been murdered mercilessly, and that indeed I found a better input option for it than perhaps even its default ever was. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope to greet you here soon again. If you're not a subscriber yet, I would be all too honored if you would consider it. That's it from me. Have a wonderful day and goodbye.